Why do we do animal experiments? We need scientific data to assess the effects, good or bad, of nutrients and other chemicals in our food, medicines and other products. And with new products emerging all the time, the demand for data is only increasing. Most data come from laboratory testing. Sometimes trials are done on humans and that includes testing on new medicines. In most cases though, that would be too risky. So we traditionally rely on animal experiments. But for various reasons, society and scientists are increasingly unhappy with animal testing. Most obviously, we don't want animals to suffer. And our society is becoming less willing to accept it. And experiments involving animals are expensive, so there are economic considerations too. But crucially, mice are simply not people. Organs on a chip, tissue cultures and computer models can sometimes more closely mimic human biology. They can help us understand what happens inside our body to the things we eat. So, the good news is that new science and technology are making alternatives to animal testing not only viable, but in some cases even better. What are these alternatives? We call them the three R's. Replacement is about recreating the conditions inside a living being using cell technology or computer models instead of animal experiments. So in this way, along with observations from animal experiments, we can use data generated without animals too. Reduction means obtaining similar information from fewer animals or more information from the same. This can, for example, be achieved through improved study design and statistical analysis. The additional information can then be used to minimize the number of animals needed in experiments. Refinement is about relieving the pain or distress of test animals and improving their welfare. Laboratory conditions of animals are better now, but more can still be done. But can we do risk assessment without animal data? Well, more complex effects are still difficult to predict from cell culture experiments, such as what happens to chemicals in our body after we eat them. And that's why in some areas, such as pesticides and food additive authorization, the law requires that we look at animal data. And a future without animal testing. With more scientific innovation, soon we may be able to ensure our food is safe with far fewer animals than today. Maybe one day we'll be able to do it with no animal testing at all. And wouldn't that just be great, guys? Come on!